Graphing quadratic functions made easy. If you're really looking for an easy way to graph quadratic functions, you've come to the right place. Whereas, if you're trying to have it be a painful process, you'll need to look elsewhere. In order to graph a quadratic function, it's necessary to have two things. First, the location of the vertex of the parabola. Secondly, the value of a. Once you find the vertex and the value of a, you need to remember the numeric sequence 1, 3, 5, and then you're set. What's this 1, 3, 5 sequence? Where does it come from? Well, here's where it comes from. Here's the quadratic parent function graphed, y equals x squared. And here are all the points entered in a table. There is a pattern in these output values. As the input value increases from 0 to 1, the output value also increases by 1. And as the input value goes from 1 to 2, the output value increases by 3. And as the input value goes from 2 to 3, the output value increases by 5. And because of symmetry, the plus 1, plus 3, and plus 5 output sequence applies to inputs going negative from 0 as well. And this is how that pattern translates to the coordinate plane. Up 1, up 3, up 5. Do you see the point being plotted one unit higher, then three units higher, then five units higher. If we went to more positive or negative numbers, the pattern would continue to seven, nine, eleven, and so on. This pattern applies for an a value of one, as in y equals one x squared. The value of a is used to multiply this one, three, five sequence. Here's the first example we'll look at y equals x squared minus 4x minus 2. Graph the function. As we proceed through these examples, I strongly encourage the viewer to get out graph paper and pencil to work along and learn a lot more that way. This is a developed skill, and for that, practice is needed. What do we need to graph a quadratic function? The two things we mentioned earlier, the location of the vertex and the value of a. The value of a is simply the coefficient of x squared, or the number that is multiplied by x squared in the standard or general form of a quadratic function. And since we have x squared, that's 1x squared. So a equals 1. To find the vertex from a function in standard form, we first need to find the axis of symmetry. And the formula for the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. Now this formula is really just a part of the quadratic formula. To use the axis of symmetry formula, we need the values of a and b. a equals 1, b equals negative 4, and c equals negative 2. Now here's the version of the axis of symmetry formula with the parentheses into which we will insert the values of a and of b. These arrows show where the a and b values will be inserted into the axis of symmetry formula. And here it is plugged in with negative 4 for b and 1 for a, which simplifies to 2, so x equals 2. So this is our axis of symmetry, x equals 2. Now we'll place that value of 2 as the center input value in the table. And so that's a hint. Place the axis of symmetry value in the center of the table. We now have one component of the vertex location to get the associated output value component, we plug 2 into our original function. And here we have 2 plugged in for x. We call this function f of 2 equals 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 2. And this becomes f of 2 equals 4 minus 8 minus 2, which equals negative 6. And negative 6 goes in our table to the right of our input value 2. So now we have the vertex location, which is 2 comma negative 6 and the value of a, which is 1. This is all we need to graph a quadratic function. Next, we fill up the input values of the table. We have 3 and 4 and 5, which come after 2, and 1 and 0 and negative 1, which come before 2. How do we get our remaining output values? Well, by bringing back our plus 1, plus 3, plus 5 step sequence. And to find the step sequence for this particular quadratic function, we multiply the plus 1, plus 3, and plus 5 step sequence by a. So we have a times plus 1, plus 3, and plus 5. 
And since a equals 1, we have our step sequence for this quadratic function of plus 1, plus 3, and plus 5. So our step sequence remains plus 1, plus 3, and plus 5. And this is how that step sequence is used in the table. We have plus 1, plus 3, and plus 5 on the outside of our table, just to the right of it. So this sequence gives us the points 3, comma, negative 5, 4, comma, negative 2, and 5, comma, 3. And because of symmetry, we repeat the same step sequence for outputs on the other side of 2. It's a plus 1, plus 3, plus 5 sequence, this time going up. So these points are going to be 1, comma, negative 5, 0, comma, negative 2, and negative 1, comma, 3. Now we're ready to plot the points. Here's our coordinate plane we'll use. First, here's our axis symmetry, x equals 2. Here are all the points plotted. And here's the curve of the function drawn through the points. And we label this function y equals x squared minus 4x minus 2. Now we have this new function to graph, f of x equals negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 8 we're asked to graph the function. Again, to graph quadratic functions, what do we need? We need two things. We need the location of the vertex and the value of a. The value of a is the coefficient of x squared. And since we have negative 2x squared, a equals negative 2. Now we'll need to find the vertex. Again, the axis of symmetry formula is x equals negative b over 2a. In this function, a equals negative 2, b equals negative 4, and c equals 8. And here is the version of the axisymmetry formula so that a and b can be inserted. And here's the formula with negative 2 inserted for a and negative 4 inserted for b. And this simplifies to x equals negative 1. So here's our input value of negative 1 in the center of our table. To find our output value, we find f of negative 1, which is negative 2 times negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 plus 8, which equals negative 2 plus 4 plus 8, which equals 10, which we put in as our output at the right of negative 1 in our table. Now we can enter the values greater than and less than negative 1 in the table. 3 greater than that and 3 less than that. Now we get to the step sequence. The step sequence is a times the plus 1, plus 3, plus 5 pattern, which for this quadratic function is negative 2 times the plus 1, plus 3, plus 5 sequence, which when multiplied out gives us a step sequence of negative 2, negative 6, and negative 10, which goes here on the outside of the table. So we have 10 minus 2 equals 8, we have 8 minus 6 equals 2, and we have 2 minus 10 equals negative 8. And because of symmetry, we have a sequence of negative 2, negative 6, negative 10 on the other reflected side of this quadratic function. So these outputs on top are 8, 2, and negative 8, respectively. And with all the points, we're ready to plot them on this coordinate plane. So first we draw in our axis symmetry at x equals negative 1. And then we draw in our vertex at negative 1, comma 10. And here are the other six points drawn in. And here's the curve drawn through the points. And we label our curve f of x equals negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 8. Now we'll have this last function to graph in this lesson, y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. We're asked to graph the function. I now invite the viewer to pause the video lesson and graph this function, then restart the video to see if you got it right. a is negative 1, b is 6, and c is negative 5. Working out the axis of symmetry, that equation is x equals 3. Here's our table with 3 as the center input value. Here's 3 plugged into the original equation. We get an output value of 4. And 4 goes into the table as our output value when our input value is 3. Then we fill in all the other input values, 3 above and 3 below the input value of 3. 
And to get our step sequence, we multiply our standard step sequence of plus 1, plus 3, and plus 5 by a, which in this case is negative 1. And since a is negative 1, we have negative 1 times the step sequence of plus 1, plus 3, and plus 5. So that recalculated step sequence for this function is negative 1, negative 3, and negative 5. So we use this sequence to get all our other output values. And here are all the points plotted along with the axis of symmetry. And here's the curve drawn through these points. Remember, that's really easy to graph quadratic functions if you know just two things. The location of the vertex and the value of A. And to put this into place, you need to know the formula for the axis of symmetry of a parabola. X equals negative B over 2A. And the step sequence of A times plus 1, plus 3, and plus 5. This has been Graphing Quadratic Functions Made Easy. Thanks for viewing.